And we are back. And we just finished watching 2022's The Northman, rated R, with a runtime of two hours and 17 minutes. I think this is still playing in theaters, but available for rent on Prime Video. This is the next movie in Robert Eggers' filmography and a worthy addition, I feel like. I can see why this wasn't as popular. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I could see why... Some people was it a hit with mainstream audiences. audiences. Yes, yes, it was. This is the story of a young prince who witnesses his father, his father's murder, basically at the hands of his uncle. Whoops, am I supposed to wait a minute? This just came out. Uh, that's that's in the trailer. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, it, well, I'll, it's basically a tale of revenge. Uh, apparently, it's based on a very old folktale viking folktale it's the same sort of source material that that uh shakespeare used for hamlet, hamlet. i was gonna say which, it's is, very which is kind of interesting because the, the main character's name is amleth right. very similar aha uh -huh. his young boy young prince idolizes his king the father uh they they come home the, the king comes back after raiding the big party there's the brother is introduced after a couple of scenes or whatever the brother makes his move, kills the father. The boy escapes. He was uh, trying to kill the boy too, but the boy escapes. The uncle thinks he's dead. but Because he's told he because is. Because he's told he's dead by by one of his subordinates. And, and we the jump. boy sees the uncle. It looks like he's forcibly taking yeah, his mother away. he's carrying the mother away. And so the boy, as he's escaping, he vows, I will, avenge, uh, I will avenge my father, I will rescue my mother, and I will kill, kill. my uncle. Right. And... Time passes, and now he's this hulking uh, Alex Skarsgård. Alex Skarsgård. <laughs> he's this crazy Viking berserker warrior. He's part of some sort of Viking clan, and basically doing Viking stuff. Yeah. You know, but, you know, Vikings were not pleasant people. They there's nothing a, romantic a, a, about these people. <laughs> yes, a big portion of the Viking life was raiding, murder raiding other villages, murdering everybody that was in them, taking the women and, and some of the men into slavery, but slaughtering all the children. It's not pleasant. Don't be fooled. <laughs> yeah. So that, I think that was pro that might be one of the things that a mainstream audience is going to have a hard time grasping because in this movie... They don't the, sugarcoat the, it. The good guys... Nobody's, nobody's like a, a white hat and a black hat. Everybody is a filthy, blood-stained shade of gray yeah including amleth including the father uh, including the uncle including the mother everybody is trying to survive in the most ruthless way possible right well life like, is cheap let's yeah let's yeah. be honest this, this, this thing takes place in like 830 ad 895 or AD. 895 ad where life, life was life cheap. is cheap if you weren't you, if you made if, it to 30, yeah, that was a good run. Yeah, if you made it to 30, it was a ripe old age. And <laughs> if, if you didn't seem to have any kind of use, you were generally just killed. I mean, there, there was like that one scene where they're just riding in the boat. And there's like a guy and his son in their boat doing their daily business. And this guy just kills them both for no reason, reason. whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just brutal. People, it's like everybody was, was completely psychotic back then. Yeah. So... I could see how where a mainstream audience they want the tale of revenge. Oh yeah, righteous vengeance. Right. I want to root for this guy. I want to root for this guy. And you could sort of see that in the beginning, but even still, I mean, he's a party to some atrocities. Stuff, yeah. Some absolute atrocities. You never see him personally committing these atrocities, but he's there. He's with these people, and well, he's killing adults. I mean, you don't see him he's, killing he's, children. He's, but... ki he's killing people that are fighting back. You don't right, really right, see him right. murdering people, begging for their lives. Right, right. But he's there, and he doesn't do anything to really say, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't set fire to that house that we put all the children in. Right, right. No, he's whatever. That's yeah. that's cool. And then later on, you find out. Other things about, you know, the relationship between the uncle and the mother and the father, and it gets really muddy. Yeah. It yeah. gets really muddy. There, you don't, I mean, you could pick a side to root for, or you could just go for the ride and just see where everything ends up. But yeah, I, I think the basic, 
I guess if you're going to pull a moral out of this, it's that vengeance just begets vengeance. And in the end, pretty much everybody dies. The only other lesson you might be getting out of this, if you are going to go on some sort of vengeful blood feud and start it, you better clip all those branches because anybody that's left behind on the other side is we'll going to come and kill you and all of our everybody that you love. Right. So if we've learned nothing from the raid too, yeah. it's that you've got to take the whole yeah, organization like, like down. This, this, the people in the story just couldn't let shit go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, he had a chance to go all, with chance, Anya that, Taylor yeah, Joy. That was and a, he, he, he totally had a chance, but he's just like, you know what? This is so ingrained in this, me. He's going to come for me. Right. And he's going to try and kill my kids. So I know I said I was just going to just give it up, but I can't. But I can't. Yeah. I got to make sure that everybody's dead. Yeah. I got to make sure everybody's dead. Yeah. This, I could see how a mainstream audience would just be like, I just couldn't get behind this this character. But this they would movie. have to go to the theater, and I don't think that this movie did the numbers. Okay, so my, I enjoyed it, but I also love bloodthirsty tales, I guess. Uh -huh. But I have to say, I was a little kind of, I mean, we saw the trailer and we were like, oh my God, this looks amazing, right? Yeah. But I, I have to admit, this is Edgar's, Edgar's third film, I believe, right? He did The Witch, he did The, the Lighthouse, and then he's done the, this. And the production values on this are gorgeous. It's a beautiful film. There's definitely money here. And I think there's like a huge studio backing this. I originally thought that this wasn't going to feel like an Eggers film, and that's far from the case, I feel like. I feel like when you watch this, you can sort of see his aesthetic and his kind of storytelling. Yeah, this, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of spaces in this film to breathe. Yes, it's a, yes. And, and it's, it's kind of a slow burn. Yes, it doesn't... Along the way. It's not like jumping from one action set piece to another no. there are big swaths where it's just build up nothing's build up, happening build up, yeah. plotting is going on things are being discovered yeah. visions are had yes it's it's not like completely magic free there is definitely magic going on in the movie mm -hmm. and there's also like hallucinations and yes whatnot. yes but there's just a lot going on that fills in and builds this world out in between the scenes where there is violence and as far as like the violence goes it's not as bad as the trailer makes it seem makes it seem like no. in the trailer i thought it was going to be very gory, gory. yeah it's not it's not it really isn't there's i think the goriest thing was when the guy was like holding on to his guts yeah like there aren't like people getting arms and legs chopped off or big gaping holes i mean even when the guy gets his nose cut off it's yeah. it's like whoosh, it's quick, yeah. It's quick, and the yeah. guy's holding his nose. In it. And he, to his credit, he lived his life without a nose. <laughs> yeah, he, he had a little helmet to cover it up. You yeah. Know? He's like, okay. I'm, not the I'm surprised soldier. he didn't die from, like, infection or something. Because yeah. let's be honest. And that's another thing that I appreciated about this film. Nobody was glowing or clean or, I mean, everyone looked lived in. The places looked lived in. Well, Anna Taylor Joy looked very clean. I mean, I mean she, she was kind of, she but was I like think, milk. but I think that's also her. I mean, her clothes, she wasn't like sparkling white or something yeah, like this. Yeah. I think he kept her clean because he think he was interested in the uncle was interested in like maybe having her be sort of like a side piece, but she yeah. wasn't having it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was interesting too because somebody in his position, I guess, as the lord of the lay of the land, he could have. Oh, I doubt she was the only one he had his eye on. Sure. I mean, he probably was having sex with several of the slave women. Right, right. I mean, right. that was like the that was like one of the points of raiding, just getting women to have sex with. Right, right. And building your Yeah. Whatever. I mean, uh, uh, the Vikings were not nice people. They yeah. Were like if if there's ever a movie where like the Vikings are just like, yeah, we're fighting for justice. Yeah. No, no, they were not fighting for justice. Yeah. They were they wanted to rape and pillage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From that vantage point, I was pleased because I thought that because there was a lot of money in this film that it would 
lose some of the eggerness, I guess, of it. But it didn't. And like you had mentioned before, it doesn't hurry to tell this story. No. It takes a long time no. to get from point A to point B. Yeah. And I can see, especially where we're at this point where it's like, entertain me, entertain me, entertain me. If nothing happens in the first 15 minutes, you've completely lost me. And I'm, to a degree, I am that way. However, this movie, I felt like because I've liked his other films, I knew that this would was completely in my wheels house and I would completely enjoy it. And I did, but at the same time, sort of like when we were talking about uh, 2021's Dune. Mm -hmm. It's it's not for everybody. I could see that this is not a film for everybody. I think the other thing was they really botched the marketing on this film, unfortunately. Oh, There's yeah. that awful story about how like the ad company completely left the name off the subway ads. Yeah, they were just like pictures of Skarsgård and it's just like what the hell what is the that? hell is that right so no, they totally forgot to put the name of the movie on the which post. is unfortunate <laughs> which is unfortunate although I have to be honest this is this is Eggers I mean he's not it's not like a Marvel movie it's not like people well, expect to I, go I, yeah, to I, see I, these things but I, I think they had a higher expectation for this film yeah I think the studio was like trying they were honestly they were trying to sell this like this was going to be some sort of bloody you know, Epic. Braveheart type thing. Right. And uh, it's not, though. No, it is not. Like I said, nobody is really an angel in this. Even uh, Amleth does horrible things. The uncle is not a completely evil monster. The mother is. is I that, don't even know that, how to describe yeah, that. I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah. I mean, you could see, you could totally see her behavior being sort of explained just because she had a horrible life mm -hmm. and now at at a certain point and then she has a good life and now it's like how do you deal with the fact that okay i'm just gonna spoil it there's no way if you don't want to hear a spoiler yeah please go away off. yeah this this cannot be explained without spoilers yeah you come to find you out. come to find out that okay like i said the king was a piece of crap and she was originally a she, slave, I guess. Well, yeah, the big story was, oh, she was a princess from, from Brittany. No, she was a slave. Uh, towards the end of the movie, she pulls her shirt down and she shows the brand on her neck. Right. And this is something that the son did not know. He was fed this lie that she was some princess that the king married. And that also explains why she's very... Um, like in the beginning, she's like, don't ever come into my room without knocking. Yes. She definitely had her secrets. She had her secrets. So basically, the king took her. The king raped her. Amleth is a child of rape. Some, for some reason, he made. I guess because she bore him a son, he made her the queen. Over time, she fell in love with the uncle. Like that was a genuine, true love. And the uncle fell in love with her as well. Fell in love with her as well, and basically was like, the only way this is going, you're, I'm going to be able to get you out of the situation, is if I kill my brother. And he kills the brother. And now here comes the ambiguous part because you think, okay, she's rescued from her, her rapist abductor. She has this child. She says, kill the child too. Right. This is her part of the plan. Yeah. This is her part of it. She's like, it has to be done because if you don't kill uh -huh. my son by the king, he's going to want revenge and he's going to kill you. And because he is his father's because son. Because he is his father's son. His his father was like crazy Odin worshiping, I'm a bear type guy. Maniac. I mean, I'm not yeah. even making up the I'm a bear stuff. There yeah. was a whole sequence, sequence where they're running around <laughs> in a cave pretending to be bears. I thought wolves. I, I read it was supposed to be oh, bears. Oh, bears? Okay. Yeah. Also wolves. I mean, some of them are wolves, but berserkers were supposed to be. I think it's. I think it basically means like bear skin or bear shirt. Oh, okay. So there's there's like that whole sequence, and yeah, the son is going to basically turn out to be just like the dad. Mm -hmm. So she's like, we got to kill him too. Right. Time goes on. Now he doesn't even get to be the, the uncle. Doesn't even get to be king for very long. No. He basically gets. Uh, knocked out of power by somebody else who yeah. pretty much and the and the and the uncle goes off to, to Iceland mm -hmm. to basically be a farm run a farm yeah. you know he's a lord of a farm he, he doesn't have this huge army he still has 
a couple his, of guys. His, his loyal servants, and he still has a whole bunch of slaves. But he's not in any way, shape, or form, you know, a, a monarch of any kind. Right. And and when they were bringing the slaves, even they were like, "Who wants to be in this godforsaken place?" Yeah, because it's Iceland. You know, <laughs> it, 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 there's there's like. There's nothing there. I mean, yeah. it looked like everything was just mountains and moss. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't even see crops. Like, what the hell were they doing all day? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so now, but it, as far as Amleth goes, he's he's on his righteous mission to avenge his beloved father, father who is this benevolent, wonderful man, rescue his mother, who's being forcefully, forcefully raped, raped by the uncle. By the uncle. And kill his evil, evil uncle who stole the kingdom and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Basically, he when he finally reveals himself to the mother, the mother just tells him everything. Yeah. He's like, your father was a piece of shit. He raped me. You're a child of rape. The son that I have with the uncle is, the, is made out of pure love. I love the uncle. He took me away. He rescued me. But then the little caveat at the end was another thing because do you want to explain it? The caveat at the end. Well, she's like, if you're going to kill... Oh, well, I... Yeah, that was kind of weird. She gives this whole speech where at the end, she's like, you, if you kill everybody, you kill, kill his son, kill kill the son that I had with him, and then you'll take me and you'll be... And, and then I'll be with you. And you'll be just like your dad. And I think she was just saying that to piss him off as, as being, you'll be just as big a scumbag as your father. Mm -hmm. I don't think she really wanted to have sex with her son. But she kisses him. Yeah, but that was part of the whole, this is what you want, because you're a disgusting rapist. You want to take take me by conquest. And but that wasn't his intention. That was, no, that wasn't his intention. But like I said, everything is just, uh, it's like muddy. And so yeah. like now, Amleth is... He's, he's still... He's confused. He's confused. He still wants revenge. But now this is But now this, this whole thing has like thrown everything into chaos... He runs off. He has to come back to save Anya Taylor Joy. Anya Taylor Joy, Olga. That was her name, right? Olga. I don't think so. I just her name was Olga. You know what? I didn't even look at the names on IMDb because I was like, I don't know how to pronounce any of these names. Oh yeah, Olga of the Birch Forest. Yeah, see, I, I remember. But yeah, it just becomes a mess. He he has to seek revenge, but then like he gets away and he he decides, okay, I'm just gonna go off with you, Olga. And we're going to go in and she reveals or he, he has he a vision. He discovers that she's with child, two children, apparently. And he comes to the realization that he was like given a choice by a witch or something where he has to have hatred for his enemies or kindness, look, for, his kindness for his kin. And he's like, I choose both because I have to, I know that he's going to come and try and kill my kids if I don't kill him. And so he jumps off the boat, goes back, and finishes his bloody revenge. And it's it's just like, God, I really just wish... It's not like they're in the internet age where you could, oh, hey, hey, King Fafner, or, or <laughs> former King Fafner. I, I, I saw Amleth the other day at Starbucks. No, it's not, that's <laughs> never going to happen. Yeah. That's never going to happen. They could spend the rest of their lives never having run into each other. Right, ever. right. And, and that would be it. But no, we have to slaughter each other brutally until everybody's dead. Yeah. yeah, this movie was nuts. It was like Shakespearean times five, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that's like, what uh, Hamlet was based on this. Yeah. Or based on that same myth myth of the, the uncle killing the father. Although in the, in the original story, the uncle is like, yeah, I'm evil. Yeah, yeah. This one, they definitely layered that whole, all that ambiguity on there. There is... I don't know if anybody has the moral high ground in this movie. Maybe just Olga? Yeah, maybe just Olga. Yeah, she because she was just like, come on, just just forget it. Just come with me. Yeah, let's just start a new life. Let's just start a new life. And he was he was down with it in the beginning, and then he just had that vision and was just like, oh, no, I got to. I got to get back there. I got to make sure you're, you, and, you and the kids are going to be okay. I thought the kid that played young Skarsgård was decent. And that was like good casting. Like I could see him growing up to be, yeah, kind of. Ethan he, Hawke's he looked, kid. He looked a little like Mila Jovovich. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah, like Joan of Arc, Mila Jovovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. I I still feel like The Lighthouse is probably my favorite Eggers film. 
I've never seen The Witch, so I, I can't really. That was judge. good. Uh, that I, was I, good. I, it was creepy. It I was... did enjoy The Lighthouse more than I enjoyed this, just because The Lighthouse was more like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, you, know, you didn't really know where it was going, where it was going, or or like what was going on. And it was just those two guys, and the performances were just amazing. Amazing, amazing. I'm not not that the performances in this aren't great. Aren't Everybody great, yeah. does a fantastic job. Yeah, this is really well acted by everybody every shot is is beautiful the, the they definitely have an excellent sense of mood and and, and what lighting mood and lighting yes Kroll, take notes <laughs> uh, the cinematography is lovely cinematography the is lovely. set pieces the, the, set the piece, art directions the, the direction. costumes it all comes together very very well yeah. i mean you could tell that there's a lot of financial backing here yeah they show a lot of like viking tradition and and lore and and god damn these people like killing shit yeah and I setting mean, shit eat, on eat, fire setting shit on fire even when somebody died it was like all right get a horse what get, was that get a about? horse over here we got to chop its head off that was and, and then they killed that woman that was singing the song too yeah i guess she was going to be his his good, partner good in the afterlife Lord. yeah that was just the a train wreck but everybody was like yay and like the little kid had to chop the horse's head, head off. off yeah the, that was another you think oh it's oh that's too gory and bloody they don't show any of that yeah yeah like yeah. like this was the marketing really tried to make you believe that this was going to be some sort of slash em up gore fest it wasn't wasn't like that it wasn't at all. like that at all this is definitely like it felt like a prestige movie this felt like something that gets nominated for oscars and stuff yeah, yeah, I feel this like this is definitely this, this was like a prestige. To go, go more the prestige route. Yeah, I mean, even when the even would it have made a difference? Do you think if they if he had gone that route, like the gore showed more of it? I think I would have liked it. You know what? More. Maybe, maybe he would have gotten the Oscar like Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Gibson does not shy away from gore. No, you know? no, he, not at he, all. He's gotten Oscars for that stuff. Is is that why, or I mean, I hate to say it, but he's actually a pretty fantastic no, storyteller. He, yeah, he's he tells and a good a story decent, too. A yeah. real like a not even decent, like a really good director. I have to say, I mean, I'm not a big fan of him personally, but that no. dude knows how to tell a story. Even something like Apocalypto, I haven't seen it from like start to finish. I've seen bits of it, and even something like that, which has like not a lot of dialogue. And this movie too didn't really have a lot of dialogue. There weren't like character moments or anything like that this was all in service of telling the story there wasn't any kind of i mean there was there were conversations clearly yeah yeah there but were, it wasn't a lot like of and there was a there was a lot of soothsaying and, and fortune telling i mean bjork's right. entire scene was just just that but dialogue explaining what was going to happen, happen. but there, it didn't seem like you know we talk about like the hero's journey you go on this hero's journey, you learn something, and then you, you turn it around, right? Mm -hmm. Or you, you get from point A to point B, and there's growth, maturity, right? Here, I mean, he came to a realization, but was there any growth, maturity? Was, was he a better person at the end of the film than he was at the beginning? Like, I don't know. Like, that... I mean, you could, I, I guess I, you, I can, you could I, try to make a case for, but I don't know if, if it's valid. I think there was a moment, but I think the problem was is that at the very end, it was like, okay, here's my moment of growth and which realization, was, which was I'll go away with, with Olga and we'll, uh -huh. I'll forget about this whole revenge thing. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as he realized he had kids on the way, it was just, ah, I got to kill everybody. Right, right. So, yeah. But that was there, also... It was like growth, but then I got to go back. But that was also... I mean, you could also explain that as, as sort of maturity because you know you have to handle your business because otherwise your progeny won't be safe. So you you kind of have to revert back to... Yeah, I know, but I did he never think he was going to have a kid? It was like, we're, we're on know. this boat, we're going someplace, we're going I mean, to you... spend the rest of our life together. It's been prophesied that I'll already have a kid. I know, why, but why would I mean whether he did it while standing on the boat or if he was already in like Norway or Finland or wherever the hell they were, they were going, going? Yeah, Orkney. Or like, would he be like, as soon as he got off the boat, she says, "Hey, guess what? I'm pregnant." He would have been like, "All right, I'm gonna go back to Iceland because I I gotta make sure." But the guy lives in freaking Iceland. He had no resources whatsoever. But at the same time, don't you think? 
people back then, you weren't thinking of the long term. It's it's mostly the here and the now. Everything was about the here and the now. You're not thinking about five years from now. You're not thinking about 10 years. You're not even thinking about a week from now. It's about the here and now. And and well, in no, that because moment... because he was thinking about the future of his children. Right. But, but he understood in the here and now on that boat as they're sailing away from the uncle... I have to go back because if I don't go back, the long term is he's going to come for me because I killed his son. Because he hadn't killed the mother or the other, the younger brother at that point. Yeah. They were still alive. And I get the impression that if he had just slunk away, I don't think the uncle would have come for him. I really don't think so. No, I don't even think he would have known where to look. To look, right. I mean, so, it's, it's a huge, wide world. And he's on ice he's on a completely other landmass right and the boat that took them wasn't really associated with the uncle because they didn't even know that the that the other brother had been killed yeah i mean this like i said this wasn't the internet age it wasn't anything i mean he had a couple of guys in slaves and that was it he wasn't like a king he mm -hmm. wasn't sending out messages to other kingdoms and whatnot Part of me feels like this mission of his was so ingrained in him that he used that as an excuse to go back. Because he even says, there's prophecy about me. Yeah. Right? So this is the thing that tethers him. Not the love for this woman, not the love for his children. It's this sense of honor, which was so ingrained in him, even from the father. Which is funny because you find out that his father wasn't an honorable person, right? So right. you've created this mythos. So it, it had to be devastating to figure out or find out that his father wasn't who he thought he was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's, like I said, everything is a bloody shade of gray in this movie. No, no. I think that's a great way of explaining it. I think, yeah. I mean, I still enjoyed it. I think that it's... It's interesting storytelling because it's not like it's not a dialogue driven movie and it just it's it's like a very 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 complicated revenge story. It is. It is. Cuz at the base of at, at the core it's I want revenge for the death of my, my father. father. Right. But along the way you find out is this vengeance really justified? Mm -hmm. And you have to consider it from the fact that yeah, I guess it is. To some degree, Just to, for or at least to him. Hamlet, yeah, it is. It is a hundred percent justified. I mean, he he was going to kill. Amleth could be like he was going to kill me too, right? And as far as Amleth knew, his mother was getting raped. He saw his father get his head chopped off. Uh, everybody in the village that was like loyal to the father was being murdered. Murdered, right? And in the scene prior to his father being murdered, when he's at that, what is it like a sweat lodge? I don't even know. Something like that, yeah. His father basically says to him, so I don't know if there's like foreshadowing here, but he's like, you have to avenge me. Yeah. That yeah, was that, like, that was, that was, that like was so of, drilled into his yeah. head. It was like, that was part of life. He's like, I will die in battle. And your job is to avenge me. Is to have your sword drink the blood of the person who did it. Right. Yeah. That was just how this kid was raised. Yeah. Whether or not his father was deserve it deserving of, the, of, of, of the revenge i mean because th there comes a point where you basically got to be like you know what dad kind of deserved that right <laughs> <laughs> i loved him but he was a dick yeah yeah <laughs> and not only that but you would think like i grew up without a father yeah do i want that same fate for my progeny yeah and if he's not there i mean he was pretty he was a pretty skilled fighter yeah he was very skilled he was he killed everybody but at the same time, it's like, you've now, okay, you've removed this threat, but guess what? This is a whole big world. There's always threat. So how do you yeah, guarantee yeah, honestly, your children's... It, exactly. If it's not the uncle that's trying to kill you, it's probably somebody some else. Yeah. I mean, I doubt anybody in that village that he raided did anything to deserve what happened to them. Right, right. And they still went there and killed everybody. Right, right. Although at the end, the Anya Taylor Joy character is like, he has that vision and she's like, we're safe. You made this possible. But at the same time, I don't know. Like, yeah. even with all my modern conveniences, I like having a partner there helping with the child rearing. Yeah. And that's, and this is before tablets and cable and other luxuries, right? 
I don't know. I mean, to me, it seems a little selfish on his part, but I don't know what it's like, like to I have said, be 12 years every, old and have your dad murdered in front of you. Yeah, everything's a big, it's every, you know, everything's a big shade of gray. Everybody's got baggage and issues serious, and secrets and serious baggage serious secrets nothing is black and white in this movie yeah so i mean i felt like that to me anyway like that made the story interesting it makes it interesting but like we going back to the whole thing i could see how that would not be appealing to a mainstream Mass audience audience right right because right. people want to go to the movies they want to see the good guy win the bad guy lose and the woman you know, saved whatever that, that's it this it's not going to leave you a hundred percent satisfied yeah agreed because agreed. it's like i don't know uh, maybe i should have been kind of rooting for the uncle the whole time yeah i mean he's he was not a good guy either right but you i mean he was, kind of feel sympathy or it, empathy for like, him no it's like you, it's like who's the shiniest turd yes in this whole thing <laughs> it's you can't really it's just too tough yeah uh, i mean i, I guess you could root for Amleth in that he doesn't know any better. Right. He honestly, he doesn't really know any better as far as the whole, he's still... the whole revenge thing with his family until he reaches that point where he has the conversation with the mother. Right. And then everything becomes incredibly complicated. Right. Right. But up until that point, he was like laser focused on his focused, goal. Focused. His intentions were pure, as pure as revenge and murder can be. go yeah you could like be on his side throughout this whole thing mm -hmm. the rest of the characters i mean the uncle he was trying to do what he did for love but still you're murdering your brother i mean yeah. okay your brother's garbage if there was, there was any other kind of story and if that was the end of it you'd be like okay yeah the brother's got to be you know the the, yeah. the king has to be put down he's right. he's not a right good right guy. right but then it's like well i gotta kill my nephew too and he's but an innocent that wasn't he's a, he's his a, idea See, that's the thing. But See, this was, is where it, I find listen, imp listen, sympathy no. for the uncle because it, it wasn't his idea. That's. The, but here's the thing. It wasn't his idea. But he was going to do it anyway. But he was going to do it anyway. Right. And he orders it to be done. Yeah. He's like, bring, go kill the boy. Yeah. So he did not have a problem with it. And it's like even worse for the mother, but you could sort of see how the, she's probably incredibly twisted to begin with. Right, right, right. Because captured enslaved raped impregnated forced to feign love for the man who did all that to her right 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 so she's broken and the son a constant reminder of that right 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 it's not you know, yeah he's an innocent boy but it's still every time she looks at him she must be like that was the most horrible experience of my life right right I had so she had no love i mean she didn't have any real love for him I don't Not think really. so. If she was willing to sacrifice him like that. And then at yeah. the end, like, after the reveal in the room with him, like, when he starts backing out of the room, she's almost laughing maniacally, right? Yeah. So, because, yeah, she's not altogether there, I guess. Yeah, I don't think she was a completely sane person. I mean, she was broken. Mm -hmm. And she saw, I guess, or she found comfort from the uncle. Mm -hmm. She found love. She found a way to... I guess mend that brokenness, but to get to that mending, it was like soaked in blood. Yeah. Including the blood of an innocent child as far yeah. as she knew. Yeah. So yeah, it's just Yeah, this was nothing is clean in this movie. No, no. But I think that's what makes it interesting. And it's that, unfortunately that does, that does make it very interesting. Yeah. But unfortunately, I guess the audience wasn't there for this. I don't know if it was the horrendous marketing campaigns or people just weren't willing to commit to something like this. I mean, it's not a short film. And yeah, like mean, you I said, think, there, it's not that it drags, but it takes a long time to get to where you're going. And I feel like we're all about fast everything, fast consumption, fast food, fast whatever. So it's like this, you really have to stick with it in order to really understand what's going on, in order to really appreciate the story. Most audiences aren't hardwired, hardwired like that anymore. Yeah, they just want to have fun. I right. mean, I I would imagine if this was like a smaller budgeted film, this would have con been considered a success if it just like played in like a small run in theaters and got the critical acclaim, which it did. Yeah, it got, it got really great it got reviews a lot, from It critics. got a lot of critical acclaim. It just, it didn't make big box office numbers. And I think 
I'm guessing that when the studio saw what Eggers had done, they were like, oh, we could totally market this as like the next Braveheart or something. And yeah, that's yeah. kind of what they were doing. That's kind of what they were doing. But it's not that type but of it's, film. It's absolutely not that type yeah. of movie. Yeah. This is this is like a thinker, you know? Yes, I mean, yes. And that's is, what, I think that's another thing that makes this great. But it's unfortunate that the marketing for this movie just failed spectacularly. And I yeah. wonder if... Edgar's really had pushed those boundaries to be more bloody, to be more gorish, if this film would have had a wider audience. Because we're all about extremes, right? We want we don't want to see it, but we don't turn away from it. Like, you know well, how people say I, it's I like a car wreck and you can't look away? That's, I, I don't know if that would have worked with this story, though. I don't and, know. And for, for that sort of thing, you would... Like, I could see, okay, if, if the guy had never lost his kingdom, mm -hmm. then I could see that you you're being able to use that where you could shove in some more action set pieces you pick up the pace in that respect think, i don't even think you needed to add more action sequences i think the ones that they had just make go for it just go oh, for just it just make them really gory right i don't think like i felt like the story moved well it's just that in those moments of violence show it to me yeah. don't shy away when the house is burning, like, you know what's happening, but guess what? I should have been hearing screams, blood-curdling screams, and you should focus on that structure burning for an uncomfortably long period of time so that I understand what is going on here, so that I know these aren't good people, even though they've been ro romanticized. Yeah. Go for broke here. Don't add more. Just go for broke. Just do it. That's that would have been my notes for this film. I think, I think by holding back. Yeah, I mean, you definitely would have appealed to a, a larger crowd. I think. I mean, yeah, like I, like I said, look at look at Mel Gibson stuff. Yeah, he doesn't shy away from it. I mean, that last temptation, well, not last temptation, the Passion of the Christ movie, that made like an egregious amount of money. And that was interesting well, that because... Had, that, that had all the religious people. But not that. just the religious people because you had like slasher gore fans going to this yeah. thing too. So that's like a very interesting intersection of moviegoers. Yeah. It's an interesting Venn diagram. Yeah, right? So, I mean, you could have done the art house people. You could have done old Edgar's, Edgar fans. You could have done Skarsgård fans. You could have appealed to people that want to see like action like i don't think it's funny because on imdb it says it's tagged as action i was like this isn't an action movie no it's not an action movie it says action adventure drama i don't even think it's an adventure adventure yeah dramatic possibly but action adventure no fucking way uncharted is more of an action adventure film yeah this is not an this is not that movie this, yeah yeah no those that's those those are terrible tagging right this, this was this was dramatic. This was this was a yeah. This, this was, was like a family drama. Yeah. So that kind of bothered me. And again, like if I was giving notes here, I would have been like, "Go for broke. Show me everything." Mm -hmm. And that would have maybe increased seats and butts. Scale of one to ten, what are you gonna give this film? I'll give it a seven. I too would give this a seven. It's beautiful. It's Robert Eggers. You've got some really outstanding performances and it's unfortunate that this didn't do bigger numbers i guess for the producers but i'm sure it did enough yeah yeah so don't cry for me argentina yeah and that's it from us and we will bid you all a good night good night